snooping for UFOs dragged Gary McKinnon into a universe of trouble. In 2002, he was charged with the biggest U.S. military hack in the universe. In the early 70s, young Gary, with his mother, moved to London from Glasgow. Gary's stepfather was a science fiction geek and UFO buff. One thing led to another, and Gary was thrown into the world of science fiction head-on, moving to hacking later as he was growing up. In 1995, he successfully hacked into Oxford University's network. To his amusement, many of the government administration's computers had no passwords. Soon, he collected an impressive portfolio of facts. He hacked into the computers of NASA, the U.S. Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and even the Department of Defense. Fun fact, he did it sitting on a couch in his girlfriend's auntie's living room. Gary had a good sense of humor, so occasionally he left cheerful messages for administrators on their computer desktops. Statements like, the secret government is blah blah blah. One day, he hit the jackpot as he stumbled on unedited satellite images of, as he said, out of this world flying objects. It looked like a satellite, it was cigar shaped, it had um, geodesic domes above, below, to the left, to the right, and both ends of. He failed to download the photos since they were too big, and his dial-up 56K modem was too slow. He even found Excel spreadsheets named non-terrestrial officers with U.S. Air Force personnel names that didn't exist anywhere. But soon afterwards, things went downhill. He was accused of hacking into 97 U.S. military and NASA computers. The calculated damage was around $700,000 for crashing computers, deleting crucial files, and paralyzing the systems shortly after the 9-11 attack. The worst timing possible. To his surprise, he faced 70 years in prison, if extradited. Now his long journey to freedom began. He was losing court hearing after court hearing for several years, and extradition crept upon him. But then, one day, he was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which explained his obsessive hacking habits. People started protesting against extradition. Even Pink Floyd lead singer David Gilmour recorded a song with Gary on vocals. Nothing worked until one particular lady stepped in. Yes, Theresa May blocked his extradition. So after a decade of fears and tears, Gary McKinnon was a free man again. Still, to this day, we don't know if what Gary found in the U.S. government's computers is true, but one thing is for sure, their security system was way behind. Subscribe for our next episode and stay safe online.